Trinity exposed number 11. The everlasting father was born of a woman. Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6 and 7. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace there shall be no end, upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom, to order it and to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth, even forever, the zeal of, of the Lord of hosts will perform this. And I've heard people come up with these ridiculous arguments. They'll say, well, when it says the everlasting father, that's talking about the father of the nation of Israel. That's not what the Bible teaches. God the father is the father of the nation of Israel. God the father is the one that's dealing with the Jews all through the Old Testament. This prophecy is about Jesus Christ. He's the one that fulfilled it. And he's called the everlasting father. Hmm. He's God the father. Don't let anybody lie to you and say, oh no, it's a, it's a different father. Show me a place where Jesus is called father. All right. That's, you know, some kind of a separate title. Jesus is father. God the father is father. You know, it's, it's weird. When you study this Trinity thing, they're constantly having to add things to the scriptures. What was the church that does that? Hmm, yeah, uh, uh, <coughs> Catholicism. Excuse me. Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6 proves that Jesus Christ is, in fact, God the Father. If you don't believe that, then you can't handle the Scriptures. Just as simple as that. 